Assalam o Alaikum guys and welcome to my YouTube channel Biology Articles and MCQs. In the previous video, you have studied about the joints classification. We were studying the joint classification on the basis of the structure. On the basis of the structure, you have studied there are three types of joints: the fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, and third one is synovial synov synov joints. In the previous videos, you have learned about the fibrous and cartilaginous joints. Today's video is about the synovial joint, so let's move to it. We will learn about the synovial joint. The main will be the structure of the synovial joint, and second will be the function of the synovial joint, and then we will move towards the types of the synovial joint. According to the structure of the synovial joint, there is a cavity present in the synovial joint. You can see that there are two bones and there is a cavity present between them. You can remember that this cavity is not present in any other joint. It is only the main feature of the synovial joint. The cavity is filled with a fluid that is mainly called synovial fluid. This synovial fluid is enclosed in a membrane that is called synovial membrane. You can see that green membrane is synovial membrane. There is an other uh, portion or, or you can say that there is an another membrane that is also covering the synovial membrane and that third membrane is called capsule. This capsule is can be called as articular capsule or simply a fibro capsule. So the, according to the structure of the synovial joint, the cavity is filled with the synovial fluid and synovial fluid is enclosed in a membrane that is synovial membrane and synovial membrane is also covered by a capsule that is articular capsule or a fibrous capsule or a sim simply fibro capsule. The examples of the main examples of the synovial joint are elbow joint, shoulder joint and knee joint. You can remember that these three joints, elbow, shoulder and knee joints are freely movable joints. So you can say that the sin all the synovial joints are always freely movable. The main function of the synovial joint is that it will reduce the friction between the bones. Why it will reduce the friction between the bones? Because of the presence of main thing that is synovial fluid here. The synovial joint, the synovial joint have many types further. First one is a saddle joint. The second is hinge joint. The third is ball and socket joint. Fourth one is planar joint. Then condylar joint and last is pivot joint. All these six joints differ on the basis of their structure. In the next video, you will learn about Uh, the definition of the hinge joint and the movement of hinge joint and you will also go through the examples of the hinge joint. First of all, you have to learn one thing about the hinge joint that why it is called hinge joint. It is called hinge joint because the mechanism of the movement of the bones which are present along the hinge joint is same as the mechanism of the hinge that is present in the door. This uh, metallic thing as you are seeing present in, in the door is called hinge. So the mechanism of the movement of the hinge joint will be the same as the mechanism of the uh, hinge in the door. Uh, as uh, you have noticed that the um, uh, movement of the door is uh, in such a way that the door will always move and the uh, second portion of the hinge is present on the wall which will not move. So the hinge joint uh, will move the bones in the same way that one uh, bone will always remain stationary and the other bone will move. So let's move to the structure and the mechanism of the movement of hinge joint. Let's start the structure of the hinge joint. Here you can see a diagram uh, with the two bones. Uh, first is the upper arm bone and you know that the upper arm bone is called humerus 
and the second are the lower arm bones and the lower arm bones are called radius and ulna you have to note that the upper arm bone has a knob structure but uh, this structure is a, a rounded shape structure in one end and the lower arm bones have a structure which is called cup which is a hollow shaped structure uh, you will always remember you have to always remember that when you will study the hinge joint there is uh, there uh, the bones will uh, which are present along the hinge joint will always uh, consist of a knob and the second bone will always consist of a cup so the movement will be uh, in such a way that the uh, bones having a knob or a rounded shape structure will remain stationary while the bone having a cup or a hollow shape structure will move uh, you can uh, see here in the diagram uh, there are two words written forwards and backward means that bone uh, uh, you can uh, move the, this bone uh, in that direction and in the backward direction also but uh, you are not uh, you will be not be able to move the upper arm bone or the bone which is consisting of a knob according to the examples of the hinge joint there are main two examples of the hinge joint the first example is elbow joint you can see in the di diagram this bone is called humerus and there are two bones uh, sorry this bone uh, bone the upper uh, arm bone is humerus and the lower arm bones are radius and ulna as you has studied in the previous lectures these bones have a single joint present between them that is called hinge joint the function of the hinge joint is a movement of the two bones towards your biceps and away from your biceps uh, you will uh, notice that when you move your arm the movement of the radius and ulna is always obvious but the humerus will not move so it is an example of hinge joint when uh, uh, where the one bone move while the other bone present will not move it will remain stationary the second main example of the hinge joint is knee joint that is present is your, uh, on your uh, at the place of the knee this uh, bone is femur that is present on your upper leg and these uh, this bone is tibia and the third bone is fibula this tibia and fibula is present in your lower leg you have to note that the knee joint is always present between the femur tibia and fibula this green portion is knee joint which will uh, which will help in the movement of your bone in these bones the tibia and fibula will move while the femur will remain stationary so uh, you have studied uh, that in the elbow joint and also in the knee joint there are same mechanism of the movement of bones one bone will, will move as uh, will move and the other bone will remain stationary about the second type of synovial joint that is saddle joint according to the definition of the saddle joint the saddle joint is a joint in which the opposing surfaces are recipro uh, reciprocally concave and convex uh, this means that in the, uh, in the previous lecture you have also studied uh, about the hinge joint and the hinge joint the both bones that are present along the hinge joint were different one consisting of a knob and the other consisting of the cup so according to saddle joint or this is a property of the saddle joint that there will be a uh, 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 there will be uh, uh, two bones that are present along the saddle joint and the one bone will be concave at one end and the other bone will be convex at one end you can see in the diagram that there is uh, there are two bones that first one uh, bone this is first one bone and this is a second bone this portion of this bone is concave in shape and that portion of this bone is convex in shape 
so saddle bone is always in a shape of convex and concave form reciprocally convex and concave form reciprocally means the uh, two bones that are uh, present along the joint uh, will be one will be concave and the other one will be convex in shape second thing you have to know now about the uh, saddle joint is the reason of its name that why the saddle joint is called saddle joint so saddle you you know that the saddle is a seat of the horse here in the uh, diagram you are seeing this seat and this seat is called saddle the shape of this saddle is same as the shape of the bones that are uh, that are present along the saddle joint you can uh, note that uh, uh, there uh, this is a saddle and the uh, uh, back of the horse will be uh, in uh, in the convex shape and the uh, 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 and the saddle of the or you can see that uh, you can say that the seat of the horse will be concave in shape this and that back this will be convex in shape and the seat of the horse will always concave in shape so as the uh, shape of the uh, saddle or seat of the horse is same as that of saddle joint so this is the simple reason of the uh, name of the saddle joint according to the movement of the saddle joint the saddle joint allow a two directional movement two directional movement means you can move your bones that are present along the saddle joint in two directions means forward and backward and also in a upward and downward form there uh, are some similarity uh, also some similarities between the saddle and condylar joint the similarities are that the uh, that the condylar joint also allows two directional movement but you have to remember that uh, the condylar joint is not allowing that freely movement of the bones as uh, the uh, uh, saddle joint is giving according to the main example of the saddle joint or you can you can easily remember the directional movement of the two directional movement of the saddle joint by the help of thumb joint in this diagram you are seeing a thumb that is moving here is a thumb joint this is the thumb joint that is example of saddle joint having a reciprocally concave and convex surfaces there uh, the thumb joint is moving backward and forward direction in that direction backward direction and forward direction and also in the upward and downward direction so this is a clear example of saddle joint you can also uh, move your thumb uh, in, in two directions and you will easily Uh, remember this thing or you you will easily understand this thing by moving your thumb